From flying cars to machines that can read your mind, join me as we explore 15 amazing new technologies that you need to watch out for in the coming year. Movies and TV shows have long captivated us with the dream of flying cars. But flying taxis are actually getting closer to reality, which would free us from traffic on the ground and change how we commute. These vehicles can take off and land vertically in place, which means they don't need lengthy runways and can transport passengers point to point within cities. Several companies are stepping up test flights this year with the aim of getting their aircraft certified for commercial use. Lyft Texa has built a single passenger vehicle that can travel 15 miles, with 18 propellers that can each change motor speeds into independently to control the aircraft. Kitty Side's Heavy Side is a winged-based vehicle that can travel up to 150 miles. The company claims its tiny size and electric propulsion system means it can travel 100 times quieter than a helicopter, while using half the energy of a car over the same distance. Toyota SkyDrive is marketed as the world's smallest vertical and takeoff landing vehicle. It can travel only a few miles at low speed today, but the next model is expected to travel up to 40 miles an hour. And the vehicle is actually small enough to fit in a garage or a parking space. Joby Aviation is certifying a five-seater that can travel up to 200 miles an hour. Its hybrid design allows it to take off like a helicopter, but fly more easily like a plane. The company acquired Uber Elevate, which means it may show up one day in Uber's app as an aerial trip option. If these companies take off, the long-awaited dream of everyday travel in the air will finally take flight. This year, Elon Musk tweeted a macaque monkey was literally playing a video game telepathically using a brain chip. His company, Neuralink, had implanted two tiny sets of electrodes into the monkey's brain. The signals from these electrodes, transmitted wirelessly to a nearby computer, allowed the monkey to move the on-screen paddle in a game of Pong using thought alone. This year, Neuralink hopes to bring its device to humans and enable people who are paralyzed to operate a computer using only their minds. Another company, Synchron, has already received approval to begin human trials for a similar device. Synchron uses a less invasive neural prosthetic connected to the brain by way of blood vessels in the neck. As well as helping paralyzed people, these devices could also help diagnose and treat brain conditions, including epilepsy, depression, and hypertension. While it sounds extreme to implant chips into your brain, there is promise that less invasive devices could make it to market as well. Control Labs, now part of Facebook Reality Labs, is developing a wearable wristband capable of controlling computers. When you want to click a mouse or type, your brain sends electrical signals to your hand telling it to move. The wristband is designed to decode those signals and interpret what you intend to do just from minute motions. That means you could type without a keyboard by just thinking about what to write with your hands. And today, this technology isn't yet accurate enough, but one day it may give us the superpower to interact with devices at the speed of thought. 3D printers have been used to create instruments, animal prosthetics, and even pizza. But undoubtedly, one of the most important and spectacular applications of 3D printers is in constructing buildings. Raw materials such as concrete and various mixtures of plastics and binders are trucked to a building site and then extruded through the nozzle of a massive 3D printer. The materials then harden, and layer by layer, the house is printed, either directly on-site or as several pieces in a factory that are then transported and assembled at a final location. This year, Mighty Buildings will complete a development of 15 3D printed homes at Rancho Mirage. Icon, based in Texas, plans to start building a community of 100 3D printed homes near Austin, which would be the single largest development of 3D printed houses. 3D printed houses has been proposed as a solution to the housing shortage, especially in remote, impoverished regions. But the difficulty of transporting all the raw materials has been a barrier. Recently, some companies have experimented with using only local materials already on site. In a small town in Italy, one prototype uses local clay soil to print housing components. The soil is mixed with hemp and a liquid binder, and then extruded layer by layer into the complex shapes and surfaces of a house. As an added benefit, this approach is zero waste. Buildings that have reached the end of their usable life can then be broken down to their base materials and then reused in new buildings. Self-driving cars have been in the works for a decade already, with disappointing results thus far. Many of us know the stresses of city driving, avoiding bikers, pedestrians, trolleys, and the dreaded left turn in traffic. It's a hugely complex challenge for any machine to navigate. For most consumers, Tesla represents the state of the art with its autopilot features for hands-free driving. But we saw a huge landmark this past year the first trials of true driverless taxi services run by Cruise. While these taxis are only available on a very limited basis,
basis in San Francisco, it nonetheless represents a huge step forward, and we may see yet even more progress in other environments that are more conducive to self-driving vehicles, like mines and construction sites, trucks on highways, small delivery vehicles for last mile deliveries, and transport pods in retirement communities. And these environments are often less trafficked and easier to navigate than cities. And as self-driving vehicles start becoming more common, we'll see profound second order effects on our lives. Vehicles may be rethought entirely now that there doesn't need to be a driver, and might be designed from the ground up for a more leisurely experience. If all vehicles on the road end up being computer controlled precisely, they could drive much faster, much closer to each other, eliminating traffic. And if commutes became much faster and more enjoyable, then cities may become less attractive, completely reforming our built environment and lifestyles. Maybe the single biggest existential crisis of our time is global warming, brought on by elevated levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So why not suck it out of the air using machines? Many startups are taking advantage of direct air capture, a technology that does exactly that. Large fans push air over a honeycomb surface covered in chemicals that react with the air. This removes the CO2 and converts it into a liquid or a solid form, which can then be disposed of or even used in construction materials or plastics. Carbon Engineering is building the world's biggest facility in Texas, capable of recapturing a million tons of CO2 per year. Climeworks recently opened a plant in Iceland that buries about 4,000 tons of captured CO2 in mineral form per year. While expensive, the race is on to improve the economics of taking carbon out of the air and saving our planet. If the Earth is getting too hot, why not cool it down with shade? If that sounds crazy, there's actually some precedent here. The dust and ash released into the atmosphere by volcanoes has a known cooling effect. Mount Pinatuba's eruption in 1991 cooled the Earth by more than one degree for four years. Solar geoengineering would do the same thing, but intentionally. There's still a number of unanswered questions. How would it affect rainfall and weather patterns? Would it be worth the potentially toxic emissions? Politicians and activists are split on the issue. This upcoming year, a group at Harvard University called Scopex plans to launch a balloon into the stratosphere, release five pounds of calcium carbonate, and then measure how it scatters solar energy. When the test happens, expect controversy. If we are to save the planet, we also need more efficient ways to grow our food. An estimated 30% of the Earth's land is dedicated to farming. And as the world's population grows, we're running out of the space needed to feed it. Vertical farms grow plants on trays that are stacked within a controlled environment. These more compact farms can be located closer to cities and customers, reducing transportation costs and emissions. Because environments are controlled indoors, water use is minimized and bugs are kept out. So there's no need for pesticides. Efficient LED lighting also makes the process increasingly cheaper. The Jones Food Company will open the world's largest vertical farm in the UK, covering 14,000 square meters. In America, Aero Farms will open its largest vertical farm in Virginia. Vertical farms mostly grow high-value leafy greens and herbs, but some are venturing into tomatoes, peppers, and berries. While today most of the efforts are still more expensive than traditional farming, the unit economics are improving every year and getting closer to the tipping point. Ships produce 3% of all greenhouse gas emissions by burning maritime bunker fuel a dirty diesel sludge. Sailors used to rely on the wind with sails, which are now making a comeback in high-tech form. Michelin will equip a freighter with an inflatable sail that's expected to reduce fuel usage by 20%. Now's design is equipping eight ships with its pivoting and foldable hard wing sails. Other approaches include kites and giant spinning cylinders called Flettner rotors. By the end of this year, the number of cargo ships with sails of some kind is expected to quadruple. The computers we use have gotten exponentially more powerful since they were first invented. In fact, the pace of improvement every year was so predictable that they followed what's called Moore's Law, which stated the number of transistors in a circuit board would double every two years. But the improvements have slowed in recent years as the size of circuit board components have become no bigger than an atom and have reached their physical limits. Now, technology companies are harnessing the properties of quantum physics to build a new kind of computer that smashes through these physical limitations. In fact, China has a quantum computer prototype that is 1 million times more powerful than the world's best conventional computers and can calculate a complex algorithm in one millisecond that would otherwise take 30 trillion years to complete. This would have valuable uses in cryptography and blockchain, executing sophisticated trading strategies, and in the intense computations needed in biochemistry. But when will these machines actually be commercialized? One measure of a quantum computing's capability is the number of qubits, which you could think of as bits for the modern computer. The prototype built by the Chinese has 66 qubits. IBM 
hopes to hit 433 qubits in the next year and 1,000 the year after that. But when will these machines actually be commercialized? These machines have a fatal flaw today. The quantum states required last for just a fraction of a second, and they need a highly controlled supercooled environment. Fixing this is a multi-year process, but in the meantime, we could see huge leaps forward in the underlying technology as it nears a commercial reality. Virtual influencers have the usual social media footprint on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, but are completely computer-generated characters. The best known is Lil Michaela, a fictitious Brazilian-American 19-year-old with 3 million Instagram followers. This is already big business in parts of Asia, like Japan, where virtual pop music divas called VTubers have millions of followers. Unlike a human, a virtual influencer will never show up late to a photo shoot, get obnoxiously drunk at a party, yell racist obscenities, or get old. And unlike a real celebrity, you don't need to pay the talent or hire a production crew to do a live shoot or incur the cost of a studio setup. So the potential of these virtual influencers is that their creators can make compelling content much cheaper than traditional media can. Technology like GPT-3 and generative AI will one day make it much more cost effective to mass produce content in a much more automated fashion. That would potentially even allow these virtual influencers to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with fans at a scale that would never be possible with today's celebrities. When police officers think a driver is drunk, they can use a breathalyzer to measure blood alcohol levels. But could we use the same technique for diagnosing diseases like COVID? It appears so. Human breath contains more than 800 compounds, and recent discoveries have shown a strong correlation between certain compounds and diseases. For example, breath with elevated acetone concentrations is a strong indication of diabetes. Nitric oxide in the breath is correlated with inflamed cells and respiratory diseases, and greater amounts of aldehydes in your breath are a sign of potential lung cancer. When a person breathes into one of these devices, that breath is fed into a sensor that detects changes in the electrical resistance of metal oxide semiconductors. Then, a computer can generate a profile of the compounds present in the breath within minutes. This is much faster and less invasive than drawing blood, and the easier use and portability of these devices could open up more access to testing and healthcare treatment. These devices could also help control the spread of coronavirus, much like how temperature checks are used to screen people before they enter supermarkets or restaurants. We've already seen breast sensors achieve a remarkable 95% accuracy in clinical studies in detecting people who are positive for COVID. The algorithms that analyze breath data will need to be improved to reach greater accuracy, but early results are promising. Monitoring chronic diseases like diabetes and cancer requires frequent blood work to track certain biomarkers. But nobody likes needles, so often diseases go unnoticed in the early days when they're at their most treatable. But now, companies are developing wireless wearable sensors that enable continuous monitoring of these biomarkers. Some use low-power electric magnetic radiation similar to cell phones to peer into tissue. Others use flexible electronic sensors sitting on top of skin. In one company, January AI even keeps a small needle in the bloodstream at all times. Other less invasive wearable electronics are embedded in clothing to detect glucose levels in the bloodstream. Another method is tattoo-based circuitry that evaluates glucose and sweat. Electronic contact lenses could also wirelessly pick up cancer biomarkers, and mouth guards with RFID technology could also monitor saliva biomarkers for disease as well. Did you know it takes 25,000 gallons of water, 12 pounds of grain, 35 pounds of topsoil, and the energy equivalent of one gallon of gasoline, all just to produce a 16-ounce steak? Today, about 70 companies are trying to grow artificial meats and bioreactors more efficiently. Scientists at Impossible Foods discovered that the molecule heme is the key factor that gives blood its red color and meat its characteristic texture. Heme is naturally found in all living organisms, including plants. To produce heme protein from non-animal sources, Impossible Foods use uses a form of hemoglobin in soy plants and genetically engineered a yeast to grow it at mass scale in a fermentation process similar to brewing beer. Now we're seeing companies like Nugs offer plant-based chicken nuggets. In the coming year, Supermeat expects to sell plant-based chicken burgers for $10 a piece, down from a cost of $2,500 in 2018. Finless Foods is awaiting approval to sell plant-based bluefin tuna for $440 a kilogram, down from more than $600,000 in 2017. Be on the lookout for plant-based bacon, turkey, and other meats in the coming year. Consumers have come to expect next day and same day delivery for the millions of products that they order. The next evolution of that may be near instantaneous delivery to everyone within 30 minutes. And technologists have long flagged drones as the key to making that happen. Zipline has already been delivering high value medical supplies to rural areas for years. Valancey has been delivering high value components for companies and the military on long haul routes. Although Amazon seems to have gone radio silent, Wing, a company within Google, has been testing deliveries worldwide with plans to launch its mall to home delivery service later this 
this year. While delivery drones are taking longer than expected to get off the ground, expect to see continued investment as e-commerce demand continues to explode. The quest for the fountain of youth to reverse aging and achieve immortality is as old as humankind, but it's maybe not as far-fetched as you might think. We're starting to understand the molecular process of aging through omics technologies which quantify the activity of genes, proteins, and metabolites in a cell, combined with epigenetics, which studies how the environment can affect the way genes work. And by sequencing the genetic information in cells, we've learned the number of mutations increases during aging, and that DNA damage is associated with driving cells into a state where they can no longer reproduce or repair themselves. Our growing understanding of aging is enabling the development of targeted therapies. For example, one recent clinical study found that a year-long pharmaceutical treatment that included growth hormone could potentially increase life expectancy by one and a half years. The scientists have also identified proteins that when injected into older mice improved age-related brain dysfunction, a promising sign for future victims of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. Now, more than a hundred companies are actively developing pharmaceutical or gene engineering approaches to help reverse aging. While most of these companies are early in validating their approaches through clinical trials, expect to see continued advances in this real-life quest for the Holy Grail. 2021 was a banner year for space tourism. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic beat Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin to the edge of space in July, as both billionaires rode their own spacecrafts in orbit. In September, Elon Musk's company SpaceX sent four passengers on a multi-day orbit around Earth. All three companies hope to fly more tourists this year, which could be the first year more people go to space as paying passengers than astronauts. Virgin Galactic is modifying its vehicle to make it stronger and safer, and will start commercial service in the fourth quarter. SpaceX recently signed a deal to send and tourists to the International Space Station. Maybe soon we'll be sending passengers to the moon. If you want to learn more about these trends and others, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified as I release more videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.